GT229 is another potential anti-halo treatment I will be closely monitoring. In this video I will share with you why it has the potential to compete with finasteride, dutasteride and even make them go obsolete in the future if everything goes as planned. How does its side effect profile looks like? how soon it has the potential to be commercially available so you can start using it in your hair loss prevention stack. All that in this video. Before we start, as always, shout out to our sponsor GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. A Chinese company, Kintor Pharmaceuticals, is slowly but steadily turning into a Silicon Valley of hair loss research. First, they came up with the KX826 pyrolutamide that we have already covered on the channel. I'm gonna link some of the videos below if you are interested. They decided to design a treatment against hair loss that will not only block the androgen receptor of your hair follicle from interacting with dihydrotestosterone, but they decided to completely degrade and destroy that androgen receptor. So even if there is testosterone and DHT floating around in your scalp, there's not going to be any androgen receptor that they could bind on and thus induce the miniaturization. Now this sounds a little bit too dangerous, right? Fortunately, this is only meant to be happening locally in your scalp by topical application of the GT229. But how safe is it really? Let's find out. In preclinical studies, by degrading androgen receptor protein, GT229 could block the shrinkage or miniaturization of hair follicles, which was caused by the androgen receptor signaling pathway. As the result, it prevented the hair from thinning, softening, or even falling out, and GT229 could also effectively inhibit sebaceous gland development and sebum secretion, which makes it also a potential for treating acne. GT229 has a topical curative effect and can avoid systemic exposure by limiting skin penetration, achieving a good safety profile. The repeated pharmacodynamic studies in DHT-induced androgenetic alopecia mouse model showed that GT229 significantly reduced hair loss with statistical difference. Now let's come to human studies because there's already the first phase of human trials. Uh, that's something that interests me more. In fact, I'm not even covering treatments that are in the pipelines on my channels that at least haven't entered the phase one of human trials. So the phase one clinical trial in China was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study to evaluate the safety and pharmacokinetics of GT229 in a gel form and in a tincture form in healthy subjects. Now the gel, everybody knows what is a topical gel. Now tincture, it's something that's a topical liquidy formula. It could be used with alcohol or propylene glycol together with the GT229. That's a tincture. It's a topical formula. The phase one study showed that a total of 92 subjects received at least one treatment dose, including those 68 subjects received gel and 24 subjects received tincture. The topical administration of GT was safe and well tolerated in healthy subjects with limited system exposure. Following a single dose administration, all subjects had no detectable drug concentrations at all time points. Following multiple dose topical administration of GT229, the mean maximum drug concentration of all cohorts were lower than 0.05 nanograms per milliliter. That means very low. All treatment related adverse events were grade one. That means not really serious adverse events and no above grade one was reported. The company will now try to choose the optimal dosage of GT for the phase two clinical trial. They may choose multiple doses as we usually see it in the trial number two. These are usually the dose ranging trials where they choose maybe two, three, four different concentrations and try to observe which one is more potent and which one is the safest and then try to find the best one 
and this one will be then used for the final trial number three. Now, although animal models showed that GT significantly reduced hair loss in mice, the phase one results were mainly focused on establishing the safety and tolerability of the drug, which seemed to be great honestly. But unfortunately, no additional info about hair regrowth or hair thickening capability of GT on humans has been shared by Kintor as of now. That's what I can tell at least. Now let me share a little bit more about the mechanism of action of GT229, because it's not a DHT blocker, unlike finasteride or dutasteride, it doesn't inhibit the 5-alpha reductase, it's not like pyrolutamide or RU58841 or CB0301, it doesn't antagonize the androgen receptor, but it degrades it. It degrades, it destroys your androgen receptor. In theory, no matter where you apply it topically on your body, it has the capability to degrade the androgen receptor. It's based on a new technology, PROTAC. I'm gonna explain it a little bit later. First, I wanna simplify for you how this new PROTAC technology works. So you have a cream, a gel or a tincture where you have the GT229 and you apply it topically on your scalp because you want your androgen receptors to be degraded. So they cannot take on any DHT and testosterone and thus you will reverse the miniaturization. Here's how it works. So what you can see here is a yellow object. That's our GT229 and it's called PROTAC. It has a linker that arrow here. And what that linker does, it takes on ubiquitin. It's a molecule carried by E3 ligase. And you can see that one end of that GT229 molecule has a pairing site for that E3 ligase, and that's how it receives the ubiquitin molecule. The ubiquitin molecule will travel through the linker of the PROTAC until it reaches the androgen receptor. In our example, it's gonna be the androgen receptor of the hair follicle. Now, it tags the androgen receptor with the ubiquitin, and it will keep doing it multiple times, as you can see here, until there is gonna be a chain of ubiquitin molecules tagged onto the androgen receptor. And the longer the chain will be, the easier and faster your body's natural exclusion system will recognize it as something to get rid of. And it's gonna happen via the proteosome. So as you can see here, the androgen receptor tagged with the chains of ubiquitins will be then shattered, will be then degraded, and the ubiquitin will be freed and will be uh, traveling in your body again, and it's gonna be again tagged with another, you know, potentially harmful molecule or protein in your body that needs to be tagged with it, and then again excluded via proteasome. And to put it even simpler for you guys, you can imagine it pretty much like GT229 being like a scorpion and the scorpion is gonna grab its prey by its arms and that's gonna be our androgen receptor and then it's gonna be pretty much tagging it with more and more venom and that's gonna be the ubiquitin in the case. And once the androgen receptor will be totally fully saturated with the ubiquitin molecule chain, it will be shattered and destroyed completely. So I'm very excited about this treatment. I think it's very breakthrough. I think it's moving the right direction and it seems like Kinter is the company that is going very pragmatic about it. It's not gonna get stuck in the trial number one or two, unlike with Brizula, uh, what we have seen, that's the treatment that should have been already commercially available when I already started posting updates on it. I think it was already in 2018 and 19. So 2022 uh, was supposed to be the year of CB0301 being commercially available. Unfortunately, it's not the case. And it seems like with Kintor, we will see uh, these results faster and treatments actually being commercialized faster. So I like that this treatment is in Kintor's hands because again, there is no one out there better or doing it more faster in my opinion. So uh, that's pretty cool to see and expect more updates from me on this treatment, guys. Now, for more info about my one-on-one -on -one consulting services, make sure you check out the link in the video description below if you want me to help you reverse your hair loss quickly without wasting a lot of time and money spent on products that don't work. Number two, if you want me to help you thoroughly throughout your hair transplant research, provide additional guidance, assistance, opinions, share all the do's and don'ts 
of things that will help you overall maximize your hair transplant success, then I'm the right guy to consult. And you can learn more about this service that I'm offering in the description below. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And I'm gonna be seeing you soon in another video. Take care.